and welcome to AJ Paints. I'm Andy. In today's video, I'll be revisiting Emiria, another one of the adversaries from Maladum, the board game from Battle Systems. In this guide, I'll show you a fast method of getting your miniature tabletop ready, and then how you can add some highlights to make it look really great. I've chosen whole red as the main tone for my base coat, because of all the roots and the rust and the mud associated with this miniature. You can see here I'm brushing it quite heavily over the top of my black primer coat, leaving some of the black areas as shadows. Pale Sand is the hero paint of this video. I use it for all sorts of things. In this case, starting to build up the lighter areas on top of my whole red base coat. I'm going to dry brush using a cheap makeup brush and my very, very clean palette, as you can see here, touching a tiny bit of paint, tapping most of it off. And then when well, you can see on the end of the brush, there's still quite a lot there. So I use a piece of kitchen paper just to dab off most of the rest. And when I brush it on, you can see it's still quite a heavy coat that I'm putting on here. I'm concentrating on brushing this downwards to simulate the effect of light falling on the top of the miniature. Although I'm focusing mainly on the top, I still do need to make sure that I've got all of the details picked out, so I will do a little bit of the undersides as well. So that's looking pretty good and that lighter colour is finished. But I want to add some value here, I want to get some shadows in. So what I'm going to focus on is imagining that I've got a light source coming from the top right and shadows from the bottom left. This is another standard colour for me, dark sea blue. I love the desaturated greenish nature to this blue and it makes it ideal for shadows. You can see here, I'm brushing from the bottom left hand side, concentrating on under surfaces and looking for areas where I want the shadows to fall. So that's given me a great setup, but that darker colour has meant that I've lost some of the nice highlights that I had from the pale sand earlier. So I'm going to go in with just a pale blue here to pick out a few little highlights in those shadow areas. It's especially important to do this here on the metal because I want some really bright highlights on here later on. At this point in the paint scheme I like to sit back and have a look at the detail and work out what I'm going to do next in terms of colours. So the fastest way to get this onto your tabletop is to use contrast or speed paints or inks. In this case I'm using Games Workshop Citadel contrast paints, starting with the appropriately named Skeleton Horde and picking out the bone areas. creatures that have been scraped up out of a grave, so there are a lot of roots growing through them, holding them together. I use Wildwood as the base colour for these, it's a beautiful dark brown colour. As this is a contrast paint it goes on really nicely. I need to be careful still to make sure that I don't go over the blue areas which I want to keep as metal later. And there we go, that's all the Wildwood, all the roots done. This is a yellowy brown colour and although it's called snake bite leather I won't be using it just for leather areas. You can see here I'm starting to pick out some of the straps. Uh, later on I'll pick, use it to pick out some of the trim on the armour as well. So moving on to the metals now, I've decided to use a mixture of black templar and blue ink just to give that black an interesting depth of colour. I think it really stands out nicely here because most of the rest of the miniature is bone, wood, roots, they're all quite similar browny colours and I think you need this to make the colour scheme pop a little bit. As you can see here, brushing it onto all the metal areas and the shading work that we did earlier on really starts to help out here. As you can see, we've got some great highlights coming through and the miniature's looking good. 
I've got three colours here that I'm using for the wood, mixing a very light grey with the green and the pinky colour from the Gullum and Flesh. Just putting them all together until I got something that I was happy with. It's a mostly light colour with just those other little bits added in. Um, I've done this because the wood should be kind of a bleached colour, I think. Uh, and also it stands out again. I need that contrast. If I painted it just another brown, it would get confused with the roots or the straps or the other things that I've painted that colour. And you can see here those choices have paid off. The colour separation is looking good. We can see all the different parts of the miniature and all that remains if we want to just get it onto the tabletop is to base it. For me, that's a coat of P3 Iron Hole Grey just painted all over, a couple of thin coats and it looks good. And that's done, that's good enough for tabletop standard. If you can play with this, you might want to put a layer of varnish on it. I usually use AK Interactive Ultra Matte, um, but apart from that, it's ready to go. You can see from these pictures, the shadows really are clear, the highlights are really bright, and that's all because of the underpainting we did at the beginning and that color choice of the red brown and the dark sea blue. If you'd like to step up the quality a bit, we're going to look at highlights. First of all, working on the metal. This pale blue lets me build on the blue ink colour that I mixed in with the contrast paint earlier and start to find the highlights. You can see here I'm picking out the edges, the top right hand surfaces, and I'm painting these highlights small. It's metal, so we've got that real bright specular reflection. Another way you can add interest to the miniature, especially on flat surfaces like this with no detail, is to paint on some scratches or dots. I really like to do this, especially on worn armour. Gradually building up to the lightest points, eventually moving to just a pure pale blue, um, even with a tiny bit of white added to get the brightest reflections. You can see here, tapping, being very careful, not applying too much paint to make sure that I focus on the brightest highlights in the smallest areas. The side of the brush swept along the edges allows me to do some edge highlighting and here's the final touches on the top of the armour. It's important that you don't overdo these highlights. You need to keep them small and focus on the top right hand side of the area. I'm not really touching the left hand side of these boots at all, just making these super bright highlights very small and just picking out those edges there. Now working on highlights for the roots, I've already painted them quite dark and I don't want to go straight to a super bright highlight, otherwise they'll end up looking metallic. So this dark flesh colour, Bugman's Glow, gives me a good starting point for the highlights. You can see here I'm using the edge of the brush to work on the detail. There's a lot of detail on these roots and I want to use the texture that's already been sculpted into the miniature to help me. I'm working quite quickly here, but just sweeping the edge of the brush over allows me to catch that detail. Now back to pale sand, gradually mixing some of that in. You can see the tip of the brush is a little bit lighter now. Um, I'm working to make my highlights sort of rough and textured, tapping on not the same as the metal, um, because the roots are going to have that rough texture, so I want to build on that. I'm keeping the brightest highlights quite small, making sure that I have got some there. It really helps to separate all the detail on this busy looking miniature. I said at the beginning that Pale Sand was the hero of this video and it's absolutely true. I'm using it to highlight everything here. In this case, not really mixing it with anything, just pale sand straight on top of all the bone colour to pick out the details and make sure they stand out from the other materials. Working on the skull here, tapping again, not really brushing too heavily, working around details like outside of the eye sockets and I'm concentrating on that right hand side of the skull. Here when I'm painting the fingers I want to make sure that I can see those little bone separated uh, pieces. So I'm just uh, painting dots on to pick those out. Highlights on the tips of the fingers and not touching the underside of the hand at all because of the shadow. Finally, the bone spike on the top. It could be wood this one, I wasn't really sure, but if you focus your highlights towards the top, 
it looks really pointy. For the wood I really only wanted to pick out a little bit on the top and then try to make sure that you could see some of the grain pattern there. So once again sweeping the brush across to pick up the texture. Now I realised that the shadows were a little bit dark and I'd lost some detail and I don't want to use pale sand in there on its own. So mixing that with a little bit of bluey green, that's the dark sea blue from earlier, gives me a shadow highlight colour that I can use to pick out that detail. Once I'd had a look at the miniature all over again, I realised that the metal wasn't shining as much as I wanted it to. So I went back in here with pure pale sand, nothing mixed into it, with the tiniest points there to give me bright reflective surfaces. All the areas that I painted in with snake bite leather got uh, a yellow, it's a medium yellow, I think it's uh, a gold brown from Vallejo, and just picking out some top surfaces here and a little bit of detail with some scratches. That's it, everything done. You can see from the slow turnaround here that we've got some great separation of colours, even though we've got so many different things going on in the miniature. We've got blues next to yellows, we've got browns in there as well, but the shadows that we put in really help to make the details clear. I hope you can see that from the pictures. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.